Joining me now in Detroit, 2020 presidential candidate, Senator Bernie Sanders. And Senator Sanders, I know you want to talk about issues, but I do uh, also want to talk about what uh, President Trump said about your former colleague in the House, Elijah Cummings, and his district being, quote, a disgusting rat and rodent infested mess that no human being would want to live in. What's your response? Jake, it's, it's unbelievable that we have a president of the United States who attacks uh, American cities, who attacks Americans, who attacks somebody who's a friend of mine. Elijah Cummings is one of the most decent and outstanding members of the House of Representatives. He fights every day to improve life in his community. Uh, I do find it interesting that when we have rural Republican districts where life expectancy is going down, where downtowns are boarded up, where people are struggling, and people are struggling in rural America, they're struggling in urban America, they're struggling in suburban America. Our job is to bring people together to improve life for all people, not to be a have a racist president who attacks people because they are African Americans. That is a disgrace, and that is why we're going to defeat uh, this president. He obviously thinks that, that these racist attacks will be effective. Are you concerned that they might be? No, I don't. I think at the end of the day, the American people understand that whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're Latino, Asian American, Native American, what we need is an agenda that works for all of us and not have a president who divides us up. We need health care for all. We need to lower the cost of prescription drugs. We need to make public colleges, universities tuition free. We need to uh, cancel student debt. The American people are behind those issues. They will not accept a president trying to divide us up by the color of our skin or where we were born. Well, let's talk about one of those issues specifically. You and other 2020 Democrats are going to be debating on the stage just steps from where we are right now. Your Medicare for All plan will be front and center, no doubt. Senator Kamala Harris says she supports it and she will not raise taxes on middle class Americans to fund it. I want you to take a listen to what former Vice President Joe Biden had to say about that. Well, I find that people will say they're for Medicare for all, but they're not going to tax the middle class because we don't need to do that. Come on. What is this? this is this a fantasy world here? Do you agree with Vice President Biden that Senator Harris Well, is I think the first world? thing that we have to understand is under Medicare for all, similar to what Canada has, people are not going to pay any premiums. They're not going to pay any deductibles. They're not going to pay any co-payments. So if you call a premium a tax, we're getting rid of that. But I do believe that in a progressive way, people will have to pay taxes. The wealthy will obviously pay the lion's share of those taxes. But at the end of the day, the vast majority of the American people will pay substantially less for the health care that they now receive. Uh, because we're going to do away with hundreds of billions of dollars of administrative waste. We're going to do away with the uh, incredible profiteering of the insurance companies and the, and the drug companies. So people will be paying, in, in, in some cases, more in taxes. But the overall, because they're not going to pay premiums, deductibles, co-payments, they'll be paying less for their health care. So is Vice President Biden correct that anybody who says Medicare for all is going to happen, but we're not going to raise taxes on anybody or on the middle class? No, I think it's a fantasy world. Well, obviously, health care is not free. Right now, we pay through it through premiums and out-of-pocket expenses. In Canada, it's paid through, uh, paid through taxes. We'll have to do that. A senior aide to former Vice President Biden is laying out his campaign's debate strategy in a new memo that they issued this weekend. Uh, the strategist writes, quote, he's going to draw a contrast where there are policy disagreements in the field, like on health care. Booker, Gillibrand, Harris, and Warren all have signed on to Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan, which means higher taxes on the middle class. Right. That's a non-starter for Joe Biden. Now, you're, well, not, you're not going to be on the stage with him yeah. uh, because of the luck of the draw. But dog. you see, that is disingenuous uh, on the part of Joe. Yeah, it's going to mean higher taxes. But if I raise your taxes, say, hypothetically, by $8,000, and I remove and I lower the health care costs that you're now paying with premiums and deductibles, which are now $12,000, you're $4,000 for the good. We are the only major country on earth that does not guarantee health care to all, or in one form or another have a national health care program. So we, under a Medicare for all, are going to substantially lower prescription drug costs. We're going to do away with the incredible complexity and bureaucracy and waste in the current system. But at the end of the day, again, you may pay more in taxes. You're not paying premiums. You're not paying co-payments. You're not paying deductibles. You will pay less for your health care costs than you're currently paying right now. And you think Vice President Biden knows that? Of course he knows that. Nobody Nobody, every study out there tells us that Medicare for All will save substantial sums of money. Last year, the drug companies made $69 billion in profit at the same time as one out of five Americans can't afford the medicine that they need. So you're seeing massive pro profiteering on the part of the healthcare industry. Uh, you're seeing uh, it just incredible bureaucracy and waste. Anybody who deals with an insurance company uh, understands the kind of bureaucracy that exists. You're seeing now over 80 million Americans who cannot afford uh, the health insurance that they need. They're either uninsured 
or they are underinsured. This is a dysfunctional system designed to make profits for the people in the healthcare industry, not to provide quality care to all. We're going to end that. You just talked about the drug companies. You're taking a bus to Canada later this morning to fight for more affordable insulin for people with diabetes. At a fundraiser last night here in Detroit, you appeared to compare pharmaceutical industry executives who are artificially jacking up prices to murderers. To take a listen. Somebody goes out and shoots somebody, they're called a murderer. We all agree with that, put them away. But what happens, what happens? If somebody runs a pharmaceutical industry and artificially jacks up the price. Pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical executives, I think, I, first of all, I, I misspoke. I said disabilities when I meant diabetes, obviously, for insulin. Pharmaceutical executives see themselves as people who help save lives and improve right. lives. Uh, do you really see them as murderers? Well, here's, we have a, this is a philosophical issue that we have to deal with. If in the case of insulin, people are dying right now. The cost of insulin has soared in recent years. You have three companies who control over 90% of the insulin market. Uh, one out of four people, we have seven million people use insulin. One out of four are rationing that insulin. Uh, people are dying. Uh, there is strong evidence that there is price fixing, uh, that these companies simultaneously raise the prices at outrageous levels, far, far, far more than the cost of production. Jake, if I have a product that costs me a few dollars to make, and I jack up that price, and you can't afford it, and you die, what, what do you call me? So you can call them whatever you want, but I will tell you that as President of the United States, we are going to take on the pharmaceutical industry. We're going to have an attorney general who is going to deal with the incredible concentration of ownership, and we're going to use antitrust legislation. I'm going right now, in a few minutes, into Canada. The cost of insulin is one-tenth of the price, 10 percent of the price, same products that we're paying here in the United States. So you can call the drug company executives whatever you want, but what they are doing involves corruption, in my view, that's price fixing. It, it, it involves unbelievable greed, where they're making, as I mentioned, the top 10 companies last year made $69 billion in profits, top three insulin companies made $14 billion in profits, and people are rationing. One out of four people are rationing their insulin, and people are dying. That is unacceptable in the United States of America. And if I'm elected president, trust me, they're not going to get away with that. You recently revealed a plan to forgive all $1.6 trillion of student debt in the U.S., covering 45 million people. Senator Cory Booker had some criticism of that. Again, you're not going to be on the stage with him, so I want to give you a chance to address it. Here's Senator Booker. It's canceling debt for people that are of higher income brackets or going into jobs, uh, you know, whether they're large corporate jobs or Wall Street jobs that are going to give them the ability to pay back their money. Why should the American taxpayer pay the student debt for the child of a, a millionaire or an entry level uh, employee at Goldman Sachs? Those are not the people who have the student debt. The overwhelming majority of people have student debt are working class people who are lower income people. They are African Americans. They are Latinos. They are struggling right now. And many of these people, right today, unbelievably, and I talk to them every day, they can't afford to get married and have kids. They can't afford to buy a house. Uh, they can't afford even to buy a car. There's a tremendous weight of oppression around their shoulders. They were told, go to college, and they did. They took out huge loans. They were told they're going to get good paying jobs. Well, that did not happen. Now, my view is that if the United States Congress could bail out the crooks on Wall Street who destroyed this economy, if we could give a trillion and a half dollars in tax breaks to the top 1% and large profitable corporations like Amazon, $11 billion profits in last year owned by the wealthiest guy in this country, didn't, doesn't pay a nickel in federal income taxes. If we can do that, you know what? We can help save a generation, a millennial generation, and cancel those debts.